Hey, what's going on there traders? This is Chris at Verillo Trading. This is going to be an educational video where we're going to explain some of the complexities involved with the electronic futures trading industry and some of the complications that people will run into when it comes to opening up an account or determining who you will choose as a broker or what front end software and data providers you're going to be using. So in this video, we will cover some of the technicalities involved with futures trading and retail electronic trading. So if you enjoyed this or if you find this helpful at some point, remember to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and all of that. And remember to check out other videos on the channel. So let's get to it right here. So at the top of the food chain, we have the exchange. This is where buyers and sellers agree on prices to do business. We have our exchanges like the CME Group, we have the Eurex, we have the Small Exchange, we have the Fair Exchange, we have the NASDAQ, we have the New York Stock Exchange. These are all the exchanges. There's a number of institutions involved here that come between you and the exchange. Now the customer here, this can be an individual or it can be an institution. Some institutions, depending on their size and the amount of capital they work with, they have the opportunity to move up this ladder a little bit. And the biggest institutions in the world, trading institutions, are able to become clearing firms and clear trades for themselves. So what we're going to do now is just basically explain to you a bit of basics around clearing firms, FCMs and brokers, and how these three right here are sort of intertwined with each other. All right, let's talk about clearing firms very briefly. A clearing corporation is an organization associated with an exchange to handle the confirmation, settlement, and delivery of transactions. Clearing corporations fulfill the main obligation of ensuring transactions are made in a prompt and efficient manner. Clearing corporations are also referred to as clearing firms or clearing houses. If you guys want to learn more about clearing firms, you should do your own research because this video is not going to cover them in a great amount of detail. I'm on the website of cmegroup.com. CME is the biggest futures market exchange in the world. In this list of clearing firms, there's about maybe 30 institutions. So what you've got to understand about clearing firms is that that is the mecca of institutions. All institutions that trade, they either need to have a relationship with a clearing firm or they need to be a clearing firm themselves. Now, when you open an account, it could be for your business or you're an individual or maybe you're a firm. You need to have a relationship with one of these institutions here. If you're a big institution, maybe you can go directly to the clearing firm and strike a deal with them. But normally, if you're an individual or a relatively small institution, you'll normally go to an FCM or a broker. In futures trading, the FCM is another word for a broker. When you open an account with a futures broker, your funds are with the FCM who is associated with the clearing firm. So your funds are really with the clearing firm, but the FCM has a relationship with the clearing firm. So your funds are basically here in a segregated account. When you open an account with an introducing broker, your funds are still here with the FCM and with the clearing firm because your introducing broker has a relationship with the FCMs or multiple FCMs. Let's just flip over and I'll give you the textbook definition of what is an FCM. It's basically a futures broker. A futures commission merchant plays an essential role in enabling customers to participate in the futures markets. An FCM is an individual or organization involved in the solicitation or acceptance of buy or sell orders for futures or options on futures in exchange for payment of money, commission, or other assets from customers. An FCM has the responsibility of collecting margins from customer, which is basically the capital required to put on and hold a position. Just remember that most FCMs are not clearing firms. Let's talk briefly about introducing brokers. An introducing broker is a broker in financial markets. In this case, it says futures, but this also applies to stocks, who has a direct relationship with a client, but delegates the work of the floor operation and trade execution to another futures merchant, typically an FCM in the case of futures. So let's move on now to the complications, guys, with opening a futures account and how your orders get to the exchange. One thing I just wanted to remind you guys of is that here's the customer you. You have your clearing firm FCM broker. You need to have an account with these guys in order to do business here. But also in order to do business here, you need some kind of a front end to the exchange. This entity right here, the front end trading and data providers, sometimes they are directly incorporated with the brokers and clearing firms. Other times, 
they can be a third party provider or a third party software vendor that is doing business with the FCMs or clearing firms. So now we'll go over some of the common problems that users face. And this is often due to them wanting to do business with a particular broker or a particular software provider or trading front end provider. And there's often discrepancies there because remember, these guys are competing with one another. I'll give the example of Ninja Trader. Recently, Ninja Trader, they became a broker. Prior to being a broker, they were a trading software provider, a front end provider, or a market data provider. They were not providing brokerage services. So what they were doing at that point is they were working with the brokers and clearing firms to provide customers the trading tools to trade on the exchange. A software company that became a broker or they opened up a division of their company that is a broker and now they provide to their customers brokerage services as well as software services to do business on the exchange. This is where it can get technical because the customer here, you want to use a different software. For example, I want to use Jigsaw Trading. That's another software company. The thing you need to understand about Jigsaw Trading is that they do not provide market data. They do not provide a front end to the exchange. What they do provide, however, is a software for trading. And the software they provide connects to other front end data and trading providers. For example, if you use a software like Jigsaw Trading, you are doing business with, for example, CQG, which is a market data and trading front end provider to the exchange or Rhythmic, which is another front end and market data provider or CTS T4 or trading technologies. These are front end providers. Also Sierra chart with their new Teton order routing. They are now a front end provider to the exchange. So certain software companies provide their own market data and their own front end to the exchange. Certain software companies do not provide their own market data and their own front end to the exchange. They derive the services from other companies. For example, if you use Jigsaw, you're getting your data and trading service from CQG, Rhythmic, etc. And the other scenario is, for example, if you use something like Sierra Chart, you are getting your data from Sierra Chart and you're getting your trading front end from Sierra Chart as well. So that's an example of a software company that is providing the market data and the front end to the exchange. They are still not a broker. They have the relationships with the brokers to offer the customers to use their services to get to the exchange, but you still need the broker and clearing firm. If we use another bigger example like Ninja Trader, like we said, they became their own broker and they're already a software and data front end provider. So basically that's one company that's trying to basically do everything. Another example is Interactive Brokers. They provide their own software, their own front end to the exchange, their own market data, and they clear their own trades. So they basically do everything for you. So again, we'll look at the four problems. Not all brokers support all front end software. Number one. Number two, some software only support their own front end. And this right here is what you guys really need to focus on right here. You cannot get market data from Sierra Chart and bring it into Ninja Trader because Ninja Trader is a direct competitor of Sierra Chart. It is totally logical for front end and market data providers to only want to support their own front end because it will actually improve the overall experience because they do not have to provide support for other front ends. For example, Sierra Chart provides support for CQG, Rhythmic, CTS, T4, Transact, and all kinds of other trading services. And only now as they develop their own front end to the CME, they are removing support for all those other trading services, which is totally understandable because for one, they created their own solution. It's just perfectly logical that they're not going to support other trading services if they have their own trading service, right? So you have to understand that from a business perspective, as well as, you know, a logical perspective, if you were in their shoes. Number three, quite important, not all front ends support every exchange and every trading product. For example, let's say your front end provider is Rhythmic. Rhythmic, to my knowledge, does not provide access to the Asian market exchanges whereas CQG does. So if you need to trade on Asian markets, then CQG is basically your only front end provider option. That's another layer of complication right there. And number four, we covered it earlier in the video. Some software do not provide data and trading services. They just provide software, which connects to data and trading service providers.
So in conclusion, you as a customer need to understand what you require in order to do business on the exchange. What you require in terms of front end trading tools and market data. What do you require to do your business on the exchange? You tested a number of different market data providers or trading service providers, and you are now set on one of them. Let's say, for example, it's Sierra Chart um, with their new Teton order routing and their Denali data feed for the CME group exchanges. Let's say you as a customer, you know that this is your trading service and market data provider. You then need to ask this company, Sierra Chart in this case, who they are doing business with in terms of the clearing firms, because remember to do business on an exchange, you need the presence of a clearing firm. And then they will tell you, we do business with Iron Beam, we do business with Advantage Futures, we do business with X, Y, and Z. And then you need to go to those guys and say, hey, this is what I do, this is how I trade. And they will give you an offer and you'll be able to open an account with them to trade on the exchange using your front end provider of your choice. Okay guys, I hope I didn't give you a big headache in this video. Remember, trading is very risky, trade only with risk capital. And by the way, I would not recommend you to trade. This is just for educational purposes only and do your own due diligence. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, hope it helped.